What is going on you guys? This is Claystar back at it again with another YouTube video. This one right here recapping week two of the CWL Division A finished their split, meaning that they finished their second week in their division. Uh, it was a pretty decent one. I think this second week was a little more interesting than the first week and I think we got a lot to talk about so I'll try and go ahead and dive right into this. Go ahead and run through the standings for you guys real quick before I start talking about the teams and the matches. We have Gen G 6 and 1, Midnight Esports at 5 and 2, Optic Gaming at 4 and 3, Red Reserve in 4th place also at 4 and 3. Then you get into the bottom half of the division, UYU at 3 and 4, LG at 3 and 4, Team Reciprocity at 2 and 5 and then EG 1 and 6. Now, hey, everybody's got to win. Everybody's got a win. Can we get some claps? Can we get some claps from the comments? Everybody has a win. Congrats to all the teams. They put a win on the board at the CWL Pro League. That means each of them got at least 500 bucks each, which is, hey, not bad, not bad. But diving into these teams now, let's start with the team in first place, Gen G. I've been giving them praise since the start, since they were straight ripping. Naga Finn's been killing it. Major Maniac's been doing his thing. Mox is an absolute animal. I mean, Mox is making a case for, you know, top three AR right now. He's definitely a top three ICR. I, I wouldn't not put him there. Uh, definitely, definitely impressed with their performance. You know, they had some really, really really nice good wins and now I'm not talking about good meaning they swept them or that they they smoked the other team I'm talking about good wins as in they won a series in a close tight series now these players have always had issues kind of closing out series but I think I'm not sure if you guys have seen the the stats but they got like four out of the five top s and &E KDs Gen G has been killing it dude they 3 2 LG 3-1 to UIU, 3-2 to OG, and then lost their final match for the sweep of their split to midnight 1-3. Now, hey, I think that's a really, really good start. Getting six win in your first uh, split of the Pro League, you really can't ask for much better than that. I mean, to go 7-0, obviously everybody wants that, but 6-1 is the next best thing. And honestly, to lose to a team like Midnight, who is in second place in the division right now, it's not that heartbreaking and it's not that bad. I think that... They really, uh, they've got it figured out. Genji has it figured out. Their search and destroy is phenomenal, and their respawn is really good too. So not only do you try and win respawns against them, but then you're going to get smoked in search. And I think their search and destroy is what's going to carry them throughout this pro league. But it's going to be interesting now that they have a lot of VODs on, uh, on tape. A lot of people are going to be able to study their S&D and going to be able to, you know, adjust and hard counter and stuff like that. And I think uh, how they adapt their S&D is going to be really the determining factor of how well this team does in the future. Uh, as it currently stands, though, they're disgusting. And, you know, shout out to Gen G for having a 6-1 uh, start to the Pro League. It, it really is phenomenal to see that, you know. It, it's good for them. Shout out to them. And then in second place, like I said, Midnight Esports. They've been showing up well. They still maintain that spot. Only lost two matches in their first split. These guys, you know, it's like for their first times in the pro league. I, th I think Lama God's been here before. I think he's been in a pro league before. But uh, I might be mistaken on that one. But hey, you know, they're happy with that. Only dropping two matches. I'm sure their their organization and all the management inside of Midnight is really excited about their performance this, this split of the Pro League. And honestly, I just, it's the same thing as I said last video. Their specialists are superb. Their rotations are superb. Their breaks are superb. They, they just have a really good flow to their team. And, and it's kind of like what I said in the last video, how they bounce back from a loss. And, and it showed me that they do have a little bit of issues bouncing back from a loss. After they got that first loss, they kind of got smoked. Uh, I mean... It, it honestly was one of those things where I wasn't sure how well they were going to perform after they lost. But after they lost that first Game 5 to Reciprocity, I think they lost that one in a Game 5. Uh, they then went on to get swept by LG uh, in a 3-0. And I honestly think that um, it's just one of those things where I'm not really sure how, how that happened. You know, like I, I really just don't know what went on in Midnight's head or, or, or like what's going on inside of all of their heads that, to make them have this kind of like dissonance, you know? And, and it sucks for them just because, you know, they they did end up bouncing back. I, I will say they did end up bouncing back versus Gen G, the undefeated team in the league. They end up winning 3-1 against them as their last match. But that second match against LG where they got 3-0 swept, it kind of shows the mental weakness a little bit, but for them to bounce back and then beat the undefeated Gen Gers, uh, it 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to think, man. I think that this team has it figured out, but I'm not sure that they can put it all together yet just because of their, you know, inexperience. And, and you know, as the division goes on and, and as the league goes on, they're just going to get better and better. And so it's going to be interesting to see how well they do at Fort Worth. Something I really haven't talked about a ton is this patch coming out. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into it in this video, but just know there's a ton of changes coming to Call of Duty, and, and it's going to mix up my opinion of all these teams drastically. So the next video I'll do on this will probably be a little patch updated video. We'll see about that. I'm not sure. In third place, you have Optic Gaming with a substitute. Now, I've talked about this, but hey, they're using a sub, and they're in third place in their division. This team is nasty. They're nasty. I mean, they have Zuma. Zuma ain't no slouch. Zuma's nasty. But, like, to be playing this well without your star player is just insane. Now, I will say, I will say that they did end up not having the best week. A 1-2 week where their only win was a 3-2 against Red Reserve. And then they end up losing a Game 5 to Gen G, And they also lost a Game 5 to LG. Now, you know, 1-2, okay, whatever. But... You got a fill-in. You're four and three with a fill-in. You're in third place. Like, who cares, man? Like, you made it to game five. You know, dude, don't worry about it. Optic, y'all are fine. Greenwall, you guys are fine. I'm sure you guys are excited to get Dashy back. You guys are nasty. I don't have anything to say about this team because there's nothing to say. What, do you want me to critique them with the sub? They're learning, learning new roles, new specialists. These guys, I, I, it's impressive, man. It, it's simply impressive to go 16 and 13 map count. Uh, with a substitute, it, it's simply impressive, and it's something that not a lot of people are. I mean, I guess enough people are giving them credit for, but like, they should be getting a lot more. That's a drastic, drastic change, and, and to be still four wins under the belt, yeah, we'll be all right when Dashi comes back, you know. And moving on into fourth place, Red Reserve bounced back a little bit. They had that two and two week last week. They went two and one this week. That's kind of, you need to stay in the positive, especially if you have kind of an okay week like two and two. Red Reserve ended up losing that match to OG. Then they end up beating EG. Now, you know, EG's in the bottom of the pool, whatever, Red. But they end up beating UIU as well. Now, UIU is right behind them in fifth place. And, and that win is, I feel like it's going to matter a lot. You need to start, like, if you if the division starts separating itself, you really need to beat the teams in the middle of the pack. I mean, I've gotten through the playoffs through tiebreakers many, many, many times. Uh, like, with the same record. And I make it through through map counter or through head-to-head -head tiebreaker or something like that, man. So, winning these matches against the middle of the pack team is really important. And so, for Red Reserve to bounce back like they did against the bottom of their division, like EG and UIU, and beat them, uh, it, it, it forecasts good things for their future. And I think Red Reserve is finally getting it figured out. I mean, they're finally looking like their old selves. They're finally looking like their World War II selves. Like, they're finally playing well. And, and you know, although they did have that loss to a substitute OG... Oh, uh, I mean, Krim is always going to play with the fire against Raided, and that's just kind of how it goes. So, you know, Red Reserve showing up at the Pro League, going 2-1, and one, ending the split in fourth place. Now, moving on to fifth place, UYU, I just talked about them. They 3-1 to EG, they lost 1-3 to Gen G, they 3-2 Reciprocity, and they 3-0'd Red Reserve. And now, it's not the best week, it's not the worst week. You really can't complain about it that much, you know, because you did only lose to, like, good teams. Like, you lost to Gen G. Okay, hey, they're nasty. You look at you look at the rest of the teams. You lost to Red Reserve. Okay, maybe they're not as nasty, but, hey, it's okay. Then you look at their last loss, and it's like, oh, no. Oh, no. They're really just... It's one of those teams where I'm really not sure what's going on with them like they should be playing well they should be playing better in my opinion i think that this team has what it takes i mean i'm not i'm not even sure how like how you fix this you know and for uiu to be playing as poorly i guess as they're playing i mean they're in fifth place they've got three wins their three wins are against lg eg and reciprocity though and and your three wins being against the bottom three of the division, no wonder you're in fifth place. But it's like you need to beat the other people. Like you need to beat the, the four people in front of you too. Like you can't lose all to all four of the top of your division. And you, I mean, I watched them play and like 
Methods is slaying his ass off and they're just like not getting any points and then Mayhem is slaying his butt off and they're just like not winning maps and I don't understand how to fix this team. I think a change is necessary for this team out of all the teams, even over EG, LG, whoever you want to talk about. I think this team needs to change the most and I think that they need to do it quick. I think I'm not sure who I would change on this team because uh, you know, they're all just trying to, to do their best and to perform well and I don't want to just drop someone based off stats or some weird shit like that. But in all honesty, I, I'm not sure what to do with this team. I don't know them well enough to know their play styles. I haven't played against them that much. I mean, obviously a couple times here, there, and the other last year. Uh, but this team is a toss up for me, man. I, I'm, I'm not sure what to do to fix it. Coming in in sixth place, Luminosity Gaming at three and four. I said they needed a big week, big week in my last video, and boy did they show up. They finally bounced back and looked like the LG we know they can be. They only, their only loss this entire weekend was to Gen G. And, and you know, you gotta, you gotta give them props for that. It was a game five loss to Gen G. They still performed well in that series. Slack is finally hitting some of his grab slams, which, you know, matters a lot. <laughs> and the rest of the squad is performing well enough. They end up beating EG 3 to 2. They beat Midnight 3 0, and they beat OG 3 2. And now those are some good wins. You know, to beat Optic and Midnight in this first split, that does a lot for your confidence. And you know, an EG win, okay, like I said, don't count it too much. But the other two, really good wins for LG, and it propelled them into that sixth spot. So I'm sure they're pretty happy with bouncing back the way they bounced back because if they didn't, they were in trouble. So shout out to LG. They've been just performing how we all know that they can perform. And I think LG might be back now. I think they're not in trouble anymore. I think that they've, they're starting to figure it out. The last two teams, these guys, these two teams have to figure it out. I mean, they, they're underperforming. They are not anywhere close to people's standards, not even anywhere close. And, and in all honesty, for reciprocity to be two and five, and to go this week and have the week that they had, it's like, I'm confused as to whether they're good or not. Like, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Like, I don't understand what kind of team this reciprocity team is. They 3-2'd Midnight, and Midnight's been playing well. I don't get it, man. I don't understand. Reciprocity, you're nasty. You're nasty, Reciprocity. How are you losing to UYU in a game five? How are you losing to EG? 3-1. Reciprocity, figure it out. Tommy, get your fucking troops in order, man. You need to figure it out. I don't know what's going on. It, it just seems disjointed. You'll have one person going off. It's the same issue with UIU. You'll have one person going off and the rest of the team getting smoked. And, and I don't know how you fix that. Play better. Shoot better, shoot the pixels better, shoot their heads, but click heads. Oh, well, I guess they don't click. I mean, pull trigger, that doesn't work as well. Pull trigger heads, ah, it doesn't work. I don't get it, man. I think this team uh, has issues with not only their pacing, like I mentioned last time, but I think this team has issues with gun skill. And it seems weird for a team like Reciprocity to be, in my head, considered lacking gun skill, but I, just watching them shoot, it seems like they're getting just outshot a lot. Like they'll rotate correctly, they'll set up correctly, they'll do everything correctly, and then just get gunned to bed and broken. And I think that might be an issue. I mean, maybe they need to play more, maybe, I mean, maybe it's just God-given talent, who knows? I mean, I don't know. And I'm just trying to give you guys some options and maybe try and, and break it down from my perspective. But I honestly am just as in the dark as you guys. I'm just kind of taking shots out there. I, From what I've seen, that's the biggest issue and I have no idea how to fix that. In last place, EG, Evil Geniuses. They finally got a match on the board. I don't know if you guys watched it, they all stood up and raised their hands. There's some claps in the building. Shout out to the guys at Evil Geniuses, finally getting a win on the board versus Team Reciprocity. They ended up losing to LG in a game five and losing to UIU in a game four. Now, I said UIU is the team that needed to change the most, but I've been on that stage. I've been with a two and six record in that arena, and I know how defeated you can feel. And when a team gives up on themselves, it's really, really difficult to get them to believe in themselves again. If anybody can do it, Tyler Fellow can, but if he can't, you know, reinvigorate the troops and, and give that, you know, much needed morale boost, which I think this win might have been, 
but if he can't, they need a roster change. And they can look into a few different options. I mean, you look into that old G2 roster that is still kind of teamless. Uh, you can look at Ferocities on the 108th bench. You could look into maybe some of the younger kids like Simp, Selium, uh, you know, somebody coming up. You know, there's a couple options they can look into that I think might make that team better. And I'm not 100% sure that they need a change. But if anybody can, you know, attest, I'm sure you guys have seen that gif of me staring at the ceiling. It, it's no fun to be losing in a consistent manner in that arena and having to live up there. And it can wear down on your mental strength. And I'm not sure that the, those players on EG have what it takes to bounce back. I hope that this win is what it takes. And I hope this win kind of, you know, reinvigorated their mental state. But honestly, I don't know. It's tough for me to say. And in all honesty, I wish them nothing but the best. You know, Tyler Fellow had uh, a lot of success with us last year on United. I'm good friends with a lot of the players on that team. Uh, there's no real issue I can give you guys other than um, maybe a slight someone getting smoked issue. It, it seems to be that every time I watch an EG match, there's always somebody double negative on the map. So it, it's hard for me to say. I think a change might be needed, but I think U UIU needs a change more so. Uh, and that's just kind of my hot take. Hope you guys enjoyed this little recap video. A little longer than my last one. I'm going to try and shorten these down, but it's hard. we got a lot of content to get through, a lot of matches. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. I probably messed up somewhere in here because I took some notes, and I probably messed up in my notes, but I hope you guys forgive me if there's any issues with it. I watched most of the matches. It's just tough for me to recall when there's like, you know, 25 matches every week. Thanks for watching it, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Make sure you, what, what do YouTubers say? Like, smash the like button or something. Don't do that. Just click it, and I'll see you guys next time. Much love, everyone. Peace out.